Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream, the award-winning syndicated podcast. And I've been doing this show for 12 and a half years. So welcome to the show. If you know the show well, great to have you back. And I love reading all your marks. By the way, I read everything, uh, whether it's on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger or Spreaker or Stitcher or Apple or Google Podcasts, as well as iHeartRadio, Pandora, BBS Radio, Radio Public, and much more. You can subscribe to the show. I highly recommend you do because it'll come right in your inbox. And this is the number one transformation conversation that's out there. These are the level of guests and conversations you wanna be a part of because this is all about playing a big game and getting you to where you wanna be in your world. What are your dreams? And if you are big and bold, would you go after them? Well, I'm gonna tell you here right up front that if you, besides subscribing, besides asking you to leave a five-star review so other people can find this conversation as well, that donate to the show because it takes a lot to keep this mama going. And I wanna keep the level going as high and higher because I'm always growing as well, exponentializing what I do out in the world. And if so, go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. And I'd love to have you join us there. And of course you can be, uh, writing to us anytime. We read everything. I've got a great guest coming up for you in a minute. I can't wait to hear uh, what she does. And uh, she's so specific. My God, this woman is credentialed. So Cynthia Clark will be with us in a minute. And she going to be talking about our hands and all the stuff you can look at for palmistry, but she does way more. And what's so cool that she's doing right now with hands is she's helping people find love. Their soulmates, as well as a dating and she's got a dating app that literally uses your hands super smart i can't wait to hear if she's going to say um to me don't get in the dating game there ain't nobody going to be for you girl because of this <laughs> whatever's going on or oh my god you know you're going to have millions of humans running after you or just a few who might get how quirky and awesome you are i don't know we're going to find out and more because she'd be reading my hands in real time and telling you more about yours. So I wanna start right here at the get-go talking about power, but specifically I wanna talk about soft power. I wanna talk about the secret of soft power. Don't you love the sound of that? I do, I love the energy of soft power. So what is soft power? Soft power is something that talks about kindness, that's about respect, that's curiosity, that's love in our heart because soft power acts as a really powerful force. And I know because you felt it at times, you've had it, received it from other people. It creates a lot of good, as opposed to the hard power that surrounds us all the time. Hard power is like, I'm powerful, I'm gonna succeed. I'm gonna use force, I'm gonna use intimidation, I'm gonna use dominance. It's all these really temporary advantages. And what is that about? Hard power is really about fear right? It's not about real power. It's about putting on some kind of mantle or identity of power. And it doesn't create a lot of good out in the world. God knows it does not feel good in our beings. So soft power instead. Can you make a choice right now to exist from that today? And if you love it today, to choose that every day. Let's talk about soft power because on the other hand, soft power is this ever-present awareness. It's an awareness of our being. It's awareness of a being that supports and connects all of us. If we're all energy and we're all one, then we are truly all connected. So please stop acting separate because you ain't. You actually are a part of, I'm you, you're me, et cetera. Even this gorgeous water bottle, thank you, Renee Musaccio for this crystal water bottle gift with the sacred geometry on it. Uh, this plant, this crystal, these, you know, I could point out so many things in my space because when we come from that place of understanding, compassion, receptivity, we remain in our strength. We remain empowered. And while we can find common ground with each other and mutually agreeable solutions to all of life's conflicts and challenges, right now we can choose soft power. So the thought that I give you for today, should you choose to accept it, is my strength lives lies in my being. My strength lies in my being. It was St. Francis de Sales who said, nothing is so strong as gentleness, nothing so gentle as real strength. 
Well, Dare to Dream was nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. It's available on over 40 syndicated outlets. And again, subscribe, leave a review. And if you would like to donate a dollar or more to keep sustaining this show, if you listen and watch, and I know a lot of you do, go to patreon.com slash dare to dream, donate there. And uh, we love you in advance for doing it. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. If you're ready for like that healing, check them out. I'm telling you, they're worldwide, their products, their services, their workshops, any place, really. Um, it's so incredible how exponentialized they are right now. Dr. Dane here, who's a great friend to the show, H-E-E-R.com. He does beautiful work out in the world and accessconsciousness.com. So my question to you is, what is a palm reading consultant and heart harmonizer? We're going to find out today because maybe it's all in your hands. Maybe. My guest today is Cynthia Clark. She's a palm reading consultant and compatibility expert. She's the author of Stories in Your Hands, and Cynthia's worked with over 7,000 people in the last 10 years to unlock the truth of their highest potential and joy. She runs a worldwide dating platform that uses palmistry to help people identify and find their soulmate match. You can find out more about Cynthia at loveinyourhands.com, loveinyourhands.com. And I welcome the beautiful Cynthia to the Dare to Dream show. Cynthia, so great oh, to have you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Me awesome. as well. I'm so curious. Uh, how did you get into this? Because I, you know, I didn't even talk about all of what you do, but I have to say, I was super blown away by all the modalities that you've gone after that are part of your wheelhouse, that are part of probably the huge soup that you offer people, but they're these cool cutting edge modalities. I don't know how you have the time to do all of them, but how did you get attracted to specializing in so many things? Well, um, it's funny you mentioned the access consciousness because that's actually one of the things I'm certified in. I noticed. And I love that modality. Um, it's fantastic, especially for people with uh, mental blocks. It works terrific. Um, but yeah, I, I think I've been a healer probably my whole life. And I just didn't realize until I started reading hands <laughs> that that's what I am. So now I just kind of all clump it together in the term heart harmonizer because I, I do believe that if we can heal our heart and if we can move past all of the subconscious influences and blockages, we can open up the life that we want. Mm. And it's all about that, that dare to dream, right? It's, it's, we, can, we can open up to dreaming a new possibility for ourselves. Mm. I love that, dreaming a new possibility and stepping into a new possibility, and especially around love and dating. You know, for a lot of people, that's prevalent. They may have had a relationship or been in a relationship. It's not been successful. Divorce is on the up and up, we all know. Or people are still in relationships but not really happy there. Or I know a lot of beautiful, articulate people out in the world like, I just can't find that person. Er. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. So why for you did dating become your thing in love? Well, I've been a palm reader for the last 10 plus years, and I would say a good 40%, 30 to 40% of my readings were relationship oriented or focused. Um, so I definitely had that perspective already with all of my clients over the years. Um, but how it really happened for me was going through my own relationship traumas. Mm. I was married for 19 years and then I got divorced and that was incredibly stressful. I ended up with vertigo for nine months mm. and I couldn't drive a car. I, <laughs> I couldn't eat. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> I couldn't travel. It, it was, it really just knocked me completely flat on my back. And then I got into what I consider a fatal attraction relationship, which was a great lesson. I look back on it now and every I consider everything as a lesson for growth and learning. 
And so I, I learned a lot in that. That went on and off for about two years. And all this time I was healing myself and working on myself. And then I eventually found my, who I consider uh, one of my soulmate matches. And I'm happily remarried now. And I've, I'm, I just had my two year anniversary. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So now I feel like, hey, I have a perspective that I feel like not only from the hands and all these years of studying hands, but now I have a perspective to really guide people through the whole journey because I've just gone through it all myself. Right. Yeah, it's important when you've had your own dark night of the soul. I think it makes you a way better teacher and leader in whatever your field is if you have a deep understanding of the dark night of the soul and what your clients go through. It makes your wound become your gift, right? Your mess become your message out into the world. Mm -hmm. So using palmistry then, Cynthia, how does somebody know what's the right emotional type for me? How, how would I know that? How would you know that? Yeah, so you're, the whole system that I came up with didn't come overnight for sure. It took several years actually to develop and really figure out, okay, the hands don't just tell us, you know, a lot of people think it's going to tell us how many kids we're going to have or when we're going to die or things like that, which is actually not true. <laughs> okay. Because your hands, your hands actually have three different aspects to them. So mm -hmm. they're very complicated. Um, number one is they have fingerprints, which form five months before you're born, and they never change. So that represents your soul imprint. Okay, so you can think of that like the big overview of looking at this lifetime and what you wanted to experience. And that also affects your, your relationships. Okay, then you've got your hand shape, which forms by the time you're about six years old. So you, you can think about being like a little baby to being about six years old. You're completely in your subconscious mind at that time. And you're absorbing everything around you. And your hand shape isn't set until your personality starts to gel. And that's about age five or six. So that's going to show you your subconscious personality traits and your influences that are going to impact you for the rest of your life. And then you've got the lines and everything else in your hands that is changeable. And so you can think of the lines like rivers of energy. They ebb and flow based upon how you are using your free will. So for example, if you are really stressed out or if you are struggling with your work, that's going to show up in your hands and that's going to reflect through some of the stress lines in your hands. Oh, well, you're saying that it, let's say someone's going through a period of stress. So there'll be stress lines that show up, but once that event is passed, will that go away and leave the hands? Yes. Wow. Yes, it will. And Ooh. I've tried, I've oh, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've tracked people over the years and I've seen the changes in people's hands and it's amazing wow. to see that. So it's, it, it really gives you um, hope and empowerment that yes, you can affect your life and you can change things and things are not set. So we have the fingerprints, we have the shape of the hand, and then we have what's inside of the hand. The only thing that never changes is the fingerprints, correct? Yes, and for the most part, also the hand shape, that's pretty well set by the time you're about six. So it, it is really interesting to kind of, when you do an analysis of the hand, you overlay all of these things together and that can really give you a good idea of who you're compatible with. Every single person, by the way, has soulmate matches and there is a system <laughs> and I've, I've actually automated the whole system into the dating website so that I don't have to read every single person who comes through. They can find out who their archetype is and who their match is. So it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. So I think we're going to launch into this because now I'm, yeah, I'm even seeing people are writing here uh, wild and how crazy this is. And it's exciting, crazy. I love it. So we're going to launch into a little bit of this because, uh, Cynthia asked for my handprints. I have no idea what she's going to say, so pray for me, y'all. But <laughs> <laughs> that's so 
cool. And I was so hoping it would come out. It's a weird thing. Like you get that weird ink. I feel like I'm with the FBI, you know, <laughs> giving my fingerprints and palm prints. But I just want folks to know who are just tuning in. This is Debbie Dashinger. This is an award-winning podcast, Dare to Dream. We've been around over 12 and a half years. I am speaking with the amazing Cynthia Clark, and she's a certified palm reading consultant and founder of Palmistry World and a dating app based on, on your hands, y'all, so you can find and evaluate and get your compatible matches so much easier than filling out I Like Long Walks on the Beaches. Her website is loveinyourhands.com. Okay, so right before we launch into this, I just wanna get a little background for people. Palmistry has been around, my darling, for over 5,000 years, which I find incredible. Yes. It's the oldest modality, right? Because the hands reflect the soul, the personality, the archetypal influences. It's basically the roadmap of the aspects of who we are, right? Yes, absolutely, yes. You can think of your hands like a mirror mm -hmm. and it's looking at you and all the different facets and aspects of you. And once you learn how to read it, which I consider, um, I consider palm reading a language. Hmm. So it's like learning a foreign language. <laughs> and at first you're just like, whoa, what is this whirl and swirl? And you know, what are these lines and where's everything going? <laughs> and it's so confusing. And I think that's where a lot of people get tripped up is it's, it is confusing when you first start looking at hands, but there is a language to it. And once you learn that language, it starts to make sense. And the more hands you look at, the more it makes sense. And then the hands hmm. are talking to you and they, they have they take on a life of their own and every single person is unique which i love and it's like it's the combination of everything that that is you <laughs> so it's a, it's truly an amazing science and study so so cynthia have you ever looked at someone's hand uh to give them a reading and suddenly thought oh my god I saw somebody else's hand and you guys would be an incredible match you could be soulmates and connect them well, yeah, I suppose that is true. <laughs> that could that could you happen. That happens for me, by the way, could you let me know? <laughs> <laughs> that could happen for sure. But that's why I try to get people into the dating site so that they can they can actually um, have that right there and it'll match people. And you can also what's cool about the site is in the membership area, you can upload as many hand pictures as you want. So you just take a digital picture. It doesn't even have to be good quality and you can determine, OK, is this person a match for me or not? So you just have to get a picture of their hand. How do you do that? I mean, so like do you, I, I'm thinking about a, an old it's an old word for me. anyway, a Xerox machine or like a printer that has a scanner, because mm -hmm. I had tried, as you know, to take pictures of my hand with my my cell phone. And it was ridiculous. This hand was shaking. I couldn't get the details. Yeah. To see it. We ended up doing the ink prints, but what right. do you recommend people do? Well, I recommend somebody else take your picture because yeah, that'll keep the camera a little bit steadier and just make sure you get the whole hand. So, you know, it's important here. I'll kind of show myself like this, but yeah, you want to have the whole hand because that what we're looking at is the relative uh, hand shape. So the finger lengths and the palm shape and things like that. So that's really all you need for the purposes of the dating application. If I'm reading for you, then um, yeah, print is perfect like I got for you, Debbie, or I need a, a high quality uh, print. So I need either a really good quality digital photo or a good scan. You know, there's different ways to, to get a good copy. <laughs> yeah. It's all about copy, people. <laughs> Whether you're in marketing or websites or doing palmistry, it's all about the copy. So <laughs> I'm going to let you take it away because this will give people a feel for if and when they come to you for a reading or if and when they use your dating site at loveinyourhands.com, what this is like, what they'll receive. So. I'm sort of excited and a little trepidatious. I have to be honest to hear what you're going to say, but mostly excited. So I'm going to let you take it away. 
Yeah, sure. So, so when somebody uploads a digital uh, picture of their hand, it's the computer will take you through um, just a few questions, not very many, and it will determine your archetype. Okay, so there are actually 22 different personality archetypes. And so for the purpose of the site, uh, we only have you upload your dominant hand. So you have two hands, okay? Mm -hmm. You have an active hand and you have a passive hand. Your active hand is going to show more of your outer self, your developing self. Your passive hand is going to show more of your inner, your subconscious self. Mm -hmm. uh, also potentials will show up on your passive hand. So just upload one hand for the purpose of the dating site. When I read for people, however, I do read both hands. Okay. Because, yes, there are things that I like to look at on the two hands. Uh, number one being the fingerprints. And I do need to see all 10 fingerprints in order to read the map of the soul. Okay, so otherwise I have an incomplete map. <laughs> okay, but so yeah, so the first thing we look at is the hand shape. And Debbie, you happen to have short fingers, and this is relative to your palm, okay? So it's it you would never compare your hands to someone else's hands, okay? And also, by the way, one type is not better than another. So some people think, oh, I got little short fingers and that's bad. It's actually not bad, it's just your type, okay? <laughs> by the way, short fingers are an indication that you're better at seeing the big picture of things. Okay, so yeah, you're you're more of a, a broad perspective type person when you have shorter fingers. Okay. Okay, now the second thing we look at is your palm shape. Okay, you've got uh, actually a pretty square palm. So I would categorize you with that combination as an earth hand. Okay, now an earth hand person is very practical, very busy, always stuff going on. <laughs> can't keep up with earth people too much <laughs> they they're just super um they're, they're very loyal type people they they don't necessarily have a ton of friends but the ones that they have are usually lifelong mm -hmm. and they're very loyal and stable in that way so mm -hmm. if you happen to uh if you, you if you happen to be friends with an earth-handed person chances are they're going to stick by you when things get rough and you know you can count on them to back you up. So yep. that's some um, excellent qualities of the earth person. Now, Debbie, I would also recommend for you to balance yourself. You need to connect with nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether, even if it's just like closing your eyes and imagining that you're on a beach or you're, <laughs> you know, up in the mountain or whatever it is, but um, even just a few minutes a day can balance you. Uh, a lot of earth types also like gardening and things like that. Like they literally wow. get their hands dirty and in the dirt. That's a really good, easy way to do it. Um, or cooking is another. Mm -hmm. You'll see a lot of chefs who have earth hands because <laughs> they love to cook. <laughs> so it's a good quality. Uh, so then we look at your fingers. Now, each finger represents a different aspect of you. OK, so to identify your archetype, we look at what is called the strong finger. OK, so um, we don't look at the thumb in this case because we consider the thumb actually separate from the fingers. The thumb actually represents your willpower. OK, so the bigger and stronger and stiffer your thumb is, the more willpower you are going to have. And by the way, your thumb looks nice and strong. So very lovely thumb. <laughs> <laughs> no shocker there. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> and looking at your fingers, your index finger, also known as the Jupiter finger, is actually what I would consider your strong finger. This is index? Yes, the index. Next to the thumb. Okay. Your, point, your, your trigger finger. Okay. And it looks like you also have a ring on that finger, which also further adds to the energy of that finger. So you're actually augmenting the strength that you already have, which I consider that a really good thing. Yes, absolutely. And, and in this case, Jupiter is representing leadership. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is how you look at yourself. It represents your power. 
So I loved how you started the show with the soft power. I'm like, oh, wow, this is so right in alignment with her reading. <laughs> I love this. Uh, because this combination of Earth and Jupiter creates the archetype that I call the emperor. Okay. Now the emperor is a, about practical leadership. Okay. So it's that earthiness that brings it into the real world. And it's that Jupiter that brings it outward and it has that bigger vision. So in terms of um, every single person has a, what I call a relationship genius. And so when you embody your archetype, what that means is that you have the opportunity to be in balance with your true nature and you have the ability to share that with others. OK, so in your case, as an emperor, your relationship genius is that practical um, just guiding somebody else in that leadership role. So you need to be in charge. So in terms of a relationship, you need to be in charge and you need to be somewhat autonomous. So wait, wait, wait. I need to stop you there. So as a lead, so leader is different than love. So as a leader, no problem, 100%. Being in charge, leading other people, guiding, yes. And autonomy, oh my word, freedom's everything. But with love, is this also bridging over there or the emperor we're just talking about career? Yes, it bridges into love as well. So for you, for a best partner for you, you need to, they need to allow you to be the emperor. They need to allow you to be autonomous and kind of take the lead. Mm. And so you need, some, you, your best match, by the way, is actually a water hand. Okay, because your earth, earth and water are harm harmonious. So that would be somebody with long fingers and a long skinny palm. Okay, so a, a kind of a narrow hand. That's actually your best match. Okay. And they would have a strong middle finger. Okay, so instead of your index finger, it would be their middle finger would be the strong finger. So in other words, the two, like when you put the fingers together, the two fingers next to the middle finger wouldn't come up to the halfway point on the upper phalange. Okay, so they would just, they would be way below. Okay, wow. so now you can tell the strength of the middle finger. And that is the archetype known as justice. Okay, so a justice person is going to be very flexible. All water types are very flexible. Hmm. And for you as an earth, you bring stability for that person because you're earthy. So, but their flexibility means that they're not going to try and control you because that's when you get really, you know, like your, your cockles will come up and go, I don't want that. So they can flow with you and around you and it doesn't bother you. Mm. And it works harmoniously. So mm. that's how the system works. And you, you would do well with other, uh, water types as well. So they don't necessarily just have to have the strong middle finger, but that's your very best match. And that would work. I call that the soulmate match. And I consider, you know, you can have many different soulmate matches. Of course, you don't just have one um, because it's a hand shape that we're looking at. But when you can connect to that type of partner and you can actually allow each other to be who they are, that's what's important because it's going to open up everything in your life. Totally. It's going to allow you to be on purpose. It's going to allow you to thrive in your career and in your, you know, just everything is going to impact everything else. And it works so well. Mm. And that, that's what I want for everybody. So there yeah. is a um, quote, actually, this is from the Bible about palmistry, which I love. And this is a Hebrew book of job and the quote is god caused signs or seals on the hands of all the sons of men that the sons of men might know their works so palmistry is in the bible i'm gonna i can't even do chapter x x x v i i like i can't even anymore but it's verse seven and anybody is interested and so if if it's even in the bible that we have an imprint so we might know our works of what I heard you say earlier was our purpose out in the world, why we're here, that our soul had great design for us and it's here. Yes. I would love you to tell me, so 
if you could just illuminate some important factoids, what what am I supposed to be doing? I mean, I think <laughs> I'm doing it, but I also constantly yeah. feel on my life path, it has not been a one and done. It has mm -hmm. been an unfoldment. And I am in the midst of yet another one. Mm -hmm. And so I always feel the energy of it. I've got an awareness of it. And God knows, and literally God knows, I am a hell yes, which mm -hmm. is a funny thing to say God and hell in the same sentence, sorry, <laughs> but I'm a heck yes, because I know, like I'm being led, I had to do this in order to do that, but I'd love to hear you fill in some specifics mm -hmm. so I can sure. you know, weigh in. Yes, I was going to lead into your fingerprints next, so yes, I love that. So, okay, so just so everybody knows about fingerprints, there are actually 14 different types of fingerprints, so there's over 10,000 different combinations that can occur on any uh, when you look at the combinations of people's hands. Some types of fingerprints are more common than others, but it doesn't make them better or worse. Again, so this is something I like to stress. It's like just because you have a common fingerprint doesn't mean you're common or you know, you're less important or whatever. It, it doesn't work like that. It simply is showing the soul's agenda. Okay, so Debbie, in your case, you have... 10 loops on your hands, one of which is what we call a radial loop, meaning that it opens up to the thumb side of the hand as opposed to the pinky side of the hand. Hmm. And that one is located on your right hand on your ring finger. Okay, so 10 loops, but one radial. Uh, so this puts you into a category we call the school of love. Okay, so on a soul level, you came to experience love and closeness. Mm -hmm. And you, and that's, I love where this, again, this soft power comes in. It's like the emperor with love <laughs> is what I would call you mm -hmm. <laughs> when I look at the combination. And so you really are here to connect your soul in many different capacities and facets. Mm -hmm. And you do that through emotional authenticity. <laughs> okay, so loops, oh, good, yes. Yeah, the loops represent the water element. And so, yeah, that's where you need to be emotionally authentic. Mm. So, in other words, not stuffing your feelings, not exploding them, but actually allowing yourself to feel everything that you are feeling and being okay with whatever comes up. Okay, so that's your that's your soul's agenda and what you're working to master. Mm -hmm. And and also I look at this as also what you're demonstrating to a partner, to others. So professionally and personally, you're helping them to open up emotionally authentic energy. Wow. Okay. This is what you're all about. And your purpose is that little radial loop located on your right Apollo. We call that the Apollo finger, the ring finger. Mm -hmm. And we, this is what we refer to as the master of creativity. Okay. So Apollo is like the God of the sun, right? He's the one who carried the, the chariot across the sky, carried the sun across the sky. So when you think about that, it's like, okay, your sun energy is tapping into the unique aspect of you and showing it to the world, okay? So it's like your specific contribution. So in your case, being creative is just part of who you are. And that's what you need to do because that's where you feel good. That's what makes you feel good. It's your, you can think of this like your happy zone, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And I love that it's a radial loop too, because it again, it ties right in with that love energy of you, you're so open to others, mm -hmm. like you're all about helping others and, and making a connection. Uh, the key for you is to make sure that you're also being true to your level of creativity and what you specifically want to contribute that's authentic for you. So just asking yourself, yeah, do I, do I want to express this? Or do I want to tweak it? Or how do I want to do it? And so that's tapping into your emotional authenticity. And, you know, it, it can change. Of course, it can change, like you mentioned, over time. And it will change over time. 
because as you learn your lessons and as you go through the the different emotional gamut you're going to learn something from each of those experiences and it's going to push push you right into a new level of creativity is there anything i need to know that really stands out whether it's the shape of the hand what's inside the hand or the fingerprints anything that's really of import i don't care if it's love i don't care if it's my hair i don't care if it's you know yeah. where i should be living or anything but something that like you know this really is indigenous to you and important for you to know as a guiding light or something to watch out for or something you don't even know about yet i'd be interested in that yes there were several things that i noticed about your hands actually um you like have four square hands <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you had three Palmer prints as well. You had two loops of productivity, which means, again, you need to be busy and productive. That's just your nature. Um, no escaping that. Um, you also you have common sense, too, which, by the way, that's not in everybody's hands. Mm -hmm. So lots of good common sense. You have a loop of intuition tied in with what we call a Persephone headline. It's a headline that curves very deeply into the palm and you do not think like most people do. So, I mean, out of all the hands I looked at, you know, um, this type of uh, headline it's called is not very common. So you're, you have a headline very similar actually to Einstein who was also a very deep thinker. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of fun. You have something in common with Einstein. And okay. yeah, who, Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Who, would, who would know that? But yeah, so a deep thinker also ties in with your secondary archetype, which is the moon. So mm -hmm. you need to really tap into that intuitive side because you have a very strong intuitive side and it can apply to you've got these things called rings of solomon on your passive hand which wrap around your uh, jupiter finger and that represents emotional intelligence so your deep thinking can really lead to an empathy gift leading to helping people to really get through their emotional stuff and that's something that you naturally embody um, I do see a little bit of heartbreak, trauma. Your heart line is a little bit broken, which is totally normal. And you also have a low set little finger, which means that you would like to have more connection. You are seeking more connection and more closeness. And it can come from childhood where you may not have gotten that in childhood. So the low set little finger is actually pretty common. So it just, shows that you didn't get that when you were young. Um, and then your lifeline is um, not having to do with how long you're gonna live, but it shows that it actually is kind of going over towards the Luna Mount as well, which is an indication that you are not connected to a specific location, okay? In terms of like, you may live in a like the same place your whole life or not, but emotionally you can connect wherever you go. Yes. It's kind of a great quality. That's very and true. Yeah, I consider that a positive thing to see in in a in a lifeline. So you can just kind of make your home even when you're on the road. <laughs> which is kind of fun. That is very true. And I, I thank you. That's a I, I appreciate you saying that. You know, I'm I'm a Cancerian with a Scorpio moon and a Leo rising, which is really an interesting combo platter. So mm -hmm. especially the Cancerian is a nester, a home person, a home body. And I've always been fascinated. I mean, I have great love for travel. And I, as you said, the busy also manifests. And I love going to events and just, you know, I, I love experiences and connections so much. So I can easily go someplace and that's home. And I've often thought how interesting for a Cancerian to be able to find a nest in so many different locations and circumstances. And I do love that quality. And then sometimes it's actually weird to come back home and be like, oh, this is what it looks like here. It's like with totally fresh eyes. Um, so that's very, very true. I wanna ask you a little deeper about the Persephone line because you said that's very unique 
Yes. And I want to know a little more, what does that indicate? What are the inherent gifts there or indications? What needs to be done with that? Or how does that manifest? Well, it, I find it interesting to see that on an earth hand because it, those two normally wouldn't go together because most earthy types are really practical. You know, you know, they're just in their day to day physical world. But you take it to another level with that Persephone headline. You like to contemplate the deeper meanings of life. Oh, come on. Yeah. And that's what you're all about. <laughs> and, and you can bring it into the practical. Mm. That's your beauty. That's your gift of the combination of the earth with the Persephone. It's oh. a beautiful combination. So whereas if you were all water, for example, you would probably just keep it in your head or, you know, I don't know how it would come out. It might not come out at all. But with you, you can kind of go in and you can mine the, the gifts of the deep and things that other people would simply not see. And you can feel it like this is how it comes through. It's like that emotional knowing and very instinctive. So you've got to trust those instincts more than anything because you have that ability to pull it out and you're going to be right on target. I still need to, I keep, I don't, and I don't know the question, but I feel it around what you're saying. I'm so grateful. It's so apropos right now with what, what feels like it's unfolding with what you're saying. And, and if you could give me something deeper spiritually about this, how might you advise someone like me to go forth and multiply? No, it's a joke. How would you <laughs> recommend somebody like me? Okay, girl, Persephone headline, like now's your time. How could I take this forward? How could I, I know it's there. I completely concur with everything you're saying, thousand percent, but something else is coming up for me around this at a deeper level than ever before. And I'd love you to speak to that. How could I allow this to be even more than ever before? What exploration, what invitation, what should I look for in me or out there? Yeah, I mean, I would suggest as an earth person, the best way that you could probably connect to this is through the physical. So either through nature or through um, connecting with the earth. So maybe going to sacred sites might be really good for you. I don't know if you've traveled to some sacred sites, but I feel like you would really tune in mm. when you're in a heightened sacred site. Um, I mean, I live in Sedona now, so we're surrounded by all these vortexes. <laughs> And I love it. Um, but I could see you as this earth person, like you could really physically connect. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I would recommend for you is crystals. Um, connecting with crystals, I think would be, yeah, there you go. That's going to really work for you. Drinking water with rose quartz in it right now. So how yeah. perfect and I'm surrounded. I mean, I would take you on a tour, but like I have stuff everywhere surrounding me <laughs> right now. Yeah. Yeah. Crystals. Yeah, crystals are really going to help, I think, open up that Persephone gift for you. Mm -hmm. And maybe even just holding a crystal and asking it to guide you or give you a message or something like that mm -hmm. might be useful. Or even putting it under your pillow mm -hmm. at that time might be really useful. Because Persephone really is the realm of the subconscious, the realm of dreams. And it's like, okay, we, it sometimes is not so accessible. We sort of have to allow it to come in and we have to get out of our own way. So sometimes you can't force it. You just have to open the door and say, okay, I'm, I'm available for the message. <laughs> oh, thank you. Amazing. Anything else before we move to another subject here? Um, well, those are definitely your big key markers that I'm seeing. Yeah, the, the important ones. Am I easy to date? Just let's get it out of the way. <laughs> um, well, to be honest, uh, no. <laughs> um, emperors are not always the easiest to date. However, um, again, it, to me, it goes back to quality over quantity. And it, all you need to do is find somebody who's actually just compatible with you. And it's, and it's going to be a beautiful thing. 
Okay. Yeah, it's true. And I'm, I'm disinterested in a lot of people. I mean, I, I get bored so quickly. Yeah. Or I could tell right away, like, eh, it's not going to work. But yeah, <clears throat> when I do find somebody compatible, it's, it is a big thing. So, <laughs> this, is so yeah. funny. this is so fun. And folks, stick around because in a minute, I'm going to ask her some stuff that you can do right now. Pull up your own hands. You don't have to buy anything. Got your own hands. Ways you can look at what you got right there and that you can figure out some stuff about you. I just want to give you, because I thought this was so cool, some of her modalities, why I said what I did at the beginning of the show, what uh, Cynthia Clark does and is already certified in astrology, feng shui, trinfinity eight, which I'm beyond. This is another show, girl, because I'm like, what is that? I just like, oh my God, every energetic pore of me is like, I want to experience trinfinity eight. She also does psych, K, which I do know about, reconnective healing, do know about, access consciousness bars, darling, I'm also a facilitator, we can trade, uh, plus tarot and oracle reading. She does the palmistry and she has the dating site that you can use your palms. Beautiful. We'll be back in just a minute and exclusively for Dare to Dream listeners and viewers, the ultimate visibility formula. If you are an entrepreneur, I'm telling you, it's the number one question out in the world. How can I get booked on radio and podcast shows? I hear it all the time. I teach you how to do that in 60 days or less. You will be interviewed. And even if you don't have a list of publicity or shows or have any prior publicity knowledge, I help you out there. I've got a program that's starting up soon and the seats are filling up. So if you're interested, you definitely want to claim your seat it's debbyd.net slash visibility. No E in my name. So it's D-E-B-B-I-D.net slash visibility. You get live coaching with me. You're going to systematize exactly how to be interviewed, where the right shows are for you, what to present so that the station or the host says yes to you. Also, access to all the replays, which are pretty amazing. I give you templates and all the press media materials you need. So you create your own press kit with me, lifetime access to the ultimate visibility formula, private Facebook group of support, accountability. We get amazing community, by the way, people become friends and feedback. Plus you get when you register a bonus call with me a 500 dollars visibility strategy call privately with me we major up your game you get publicity templates prep sheets press kit examples course replays and i'm telling you the class is beyond the beyonds people are being interviewed during the class and way after we set beautiful goals and i love to see you fly and get the exposure that you deserve to have. Because if you have a business, don't you wanna be seen? If you have a message, don't you wanna be heard? Of course you do. This has got to be today. Media's everywhere, 24 seven. We are our own broadcasters. It's not just about the book you wrote. It's not just about the product you did. You have to be your business's chief spokesperson. So let your voice shine. It's time for you to live out loud. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility and sign up there and get your free session with me as my gift to you. And I am speaking with the amazing Cynthia Clark. Again, her website, lovingyourhands.com. So Cynthia, I want to ask you if you'll just give people some tips that we can look at our hands right now and some things we can look at or our fingerprints. Mm -hmm. And just take a look. What are some fun things that we can look at to learn a little bit about ourselves? Well, one of the things that's really easy to look for is your giving versus receiving energy. Ooh. So that's always good for relationships, right? <laughs> so if you take a look at your hand, you have these things on your hand called mounts. Okay, now when you relax your hand and you kind of tilt it a little bit sideways, you can see these little pillows and puffiness mm -hmm. sections to your hand. Okay, those are called the mounts. And you want to take a look at your Venus mount, which is the one that wraps uh, on the inside of your lifeline. Okay, the lifeline is the major line that wraps around your thumb ball. And that's your Venus. Okay, that's your giving energy. Mm -hmm. Now, when this is really big and puffy. That shows a lot of giving energy. Okay, so 
that um, you can think of it as your heart chakra energy as well. So you can see the quality of your heart chakra and you can also squeeze it and see how much available energy you have. So if it's really uh, what I call elastic, that's what we want to see. Um, in other words, it bounces back. It's got some, you know, it's got some energy to it. Um, if it's if you squeeze it and it kind of collapses, that means you're tired. That means probably you've either been giving too much or maybe you are you just don't have a lot of energy right now to give. And it could be because you're stressed out in work or for whatever reason. Now, if it's too big, in other words, if it looks mm. like grossly out of proportion to the rest of your hand, mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a sign that it's overstimulated and you could be prone to addictions because this is what we also call like your sex drugs rock and roll mount. So if it's really big and puffy and it's like huge, it's like, wow, your appetite is too much. Okay, so if you want to look for the balance on that section of your hand. Now, your receiving energy is Luna. Okay, so we talked a little bit about Luna. That's this far side of the hand, which is um, all at the base of the hand as well. And this, again, you want to look for the puffiness. This is your area of receiving. Okay, so if you okay, have. Healthy. Yeah, you look puffy, you look healthy. Is it yeah. healthy receiving? I love to receive, by yes. the way. Uh, <laughs> Debbie, I was going to say your hand is very balanced on both your giving and your receiving side. That's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. You have no idea. No, yeah. It's a big deal. yeah, it looks it's really good. Fun. So what you want to look out for is droopiness in this mount. Mm. Sometimes it'll literally drop into the wrist. Like that's not a good sign. And another sign to check for is redness or blotchiness. Mm. That's another indication that your receiving energy is spent. And I've seen it a lot of times on people who are caregivers. Mm. They, they just, they don't, they can't receive because they're so busy taking care of somebody else. So take a look at that section and you want it again, just to be kind of a healthy pinkish color and, and puffy, but not too puffy. Now, if it's overly puffy again, so we look at the, the too much side, that could be somebody who's not in reality. Okay, so that could be somebody like they're very imaginative, but they're not necessarily in a good way. Like they can't, <laughs> can't bring it back to, you know, the reality. Um, so that can be problematic, obviously. Mm -hmm. So those are two areas that people can check for. Uh, pretty darn easily, <laughs> which is kind of fun. So a reading with you, when people sign up for a reading with you, is that an hour and you give them, do they get materials to tell me what that's like? Yeah, so I work with people worldwide. So you don't have to be in Sedona to see me, which is nice. Well, be fun to go there. Yeah, it, certainly. I've got a lovely space here. <laughs> um but yeah, so people can sign up for as little as 30 minutes if they want to do, you know, a shorter reading uh, or they can sign up for uh, coaching. I do, you know, some ongoing coaching type work or if they want to do an hour, they can do that. Or even a three session is kind of like the middle ground. Like do I, I do quite a bit in three sessions. We look at everything in your hands. Uh, we may combine a little bit of tarot with it as well. Um, and, and some coaching, so coaching slash healing. So I can, I can bring in some of the modalities that I, that we talked about as well. So that's kind of fun. Oh my God. Okay. I, that is so cool. So this is where your modalities, because you can really give an incredible overview and matrix with people. Like I'm really feeling the energy of that. Mm -hmm. How powerful. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to start with the hands and then I can go into the healing after that because I can see where the blocks are and I can see where the stress is and it, everything shows up in the hands. What about somebody who's in a relationship? Because I was thinking even as you were doing my reading and saying who I should be with and I'm trying to picture my boyfriend's hands and I, I'll have to look at him for sure today. But um would, would we both send you fingerprints, handprints, et cetera, and then you can talk about yes. uh, couples? Sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. I've done lots of readings for couples. And yeah, it, it gives a whole new insight into what each partner needs mm. and you know what their natural strengths are. And it's it's a lot of fun. It really and I think awareness brings compassion as well because it's like, oh wow, it's in their hands. Like I shouldn't be upset about this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're not just a butt, but you know, you're not just a pain in my whatever. Oh, <laughs> you're actually created that way. It makes sense that you are that. Like, yeah, it's inherent in your hands, your human design, your cards, your this and that. You know, and that's something I want to say that's very interesting about what you're what you, some of what you shared, because <clears throat> down to the freaking cooking in the kitchen. It comes up in my human design, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like this idea, and it's interesting. I love, I'm a certified wine specialist. I love, I don't know about the cooking, bleh, but I love the eating. I love the breaking of bread with people. I love the connection over a meal over, I don't know, there's just something so delicious and European about it and, mm. Yeah, it's beautiful, lux luxurious to me. And so it's very interesting that these elements show up in so many different places. It feels like check, like this is no accident. You yeah. truly are built like this. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And so, yeah, embrace that because it's a it's a beautiful thing to share food with people. I used to own a restaurant, so I have that nurturing aspect in feeding people. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yum. Well, Cynthia, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, I have a pretty big goal that I actually um, expressed recently to one of my clients because I was doing a reading for her and we were talking about her dreams and she turned around and said, well, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of surprised by that. So I was sort of like, oh, well, I better come up with something. I better to, like think about this. And I and I do think about it all the time, but I don't always voice it. So it was really fun to be able to, to express it to her verbally and really claim it. And uh, my goal, my dream is to impact 10 million people and help them to find their soulmate match. So that's my dream. <laughs> and to do that, where do they go? They go to loveinyourhands.com and they can get started for free. Oh, that's so nice. Wow. Yeah. So people, if this is your wheelhouse, you know, if you're new age, metaphysical, spiritual, like if this resonates and you believe the science of the hands and palmistry, I mean, first of all, obviously you can get your own information on this dating site about you. I'm sure it's got your own qualities and then help you connect with somebody. And why not? If you've been trying other ways of meeting your person, use Cynthia's method. I that's so beautiful that you're offering this for free. Loveinyourhands.com. I thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing all this really interesting information and your brilliance. Oh, thank you. It was so much fun. Thank you for having me on. Pleasure. And I end this show with this quote from Carl Jung, which is often the hands will solve a mystery that the intellect has struggled with in vain. Join me for my next show, Dare to Dream. And I'm going to be featuring my guest, Corinne Grillo. I'm so excited to have Corinne on the show. She's the author of The Angel Experiment. She offers soul cleanses. This woman is a friend of mine and OMG, she is so powerful, so powerful. And uh, for me to feature her and let you meet her, if you don't know her yet, get ready people. She's gonna knock your socks off. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast so you can receive your number one transformation conversation. Also, if you're listening and you like to see what we look like, because it's so fun to see the animation and my beautiful guests, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you so much for joining me on Dare to Dream. If you do, want, if it speaks to you and resonates with you, you're ready for the ultimate visibility formula. You're ready to be interviewed on radio and podcasts. You want the entire system. Go to debbyd.net. Remember, there's no E, D-E-B-B-I. 
d.net slash visibility and register today and get your free one hour private session with me. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place.